Hi everyone, I'm really excited because I've got my October favorites video for you. It's been a while since I've done a favorites video. I think it just, you know, I stopped buying stuff for the past few months because I've been home for such a long time as I'm sure most of you guys have been too. And I just had this realization that there were things that I was starting to now slowly purchase and maybe even just stuff that I've been acquiring over the last few months that I wanna share with you guys. So today we're gonna talk about all of that. All right, so I'm gonna break this up into categories, starting with beauty products I love, then I'm gonna go into some fashion stuff, and then I'll go into kind of like the home and lifestyle things. That's including stuff that I am using for the kids. All right, so beauty, which is always my favorite topic. Two of them are not skincare, they're actually makeup, but I wanted to talk about this. It is by Bite Beauty. This is their Changemaker Supercharged Micellar Foundation. The shade that I've been wearing is L45. So this was obviously sent to me through PR, and it sat on my desk for a couple of days and then I couldn't find my foundation, which is not an uncommon thing to happen. My makeup ends up all over the place. So I picked this up, decided to try it, and I ended up loving this foundation. I've been using it daily. It starts off really dewy, especially if you do the same kind of skin prep that I do, and that I mean like the skincare that I use. I go really hydrated, really moisturized, lots of sunscreen, and then I put my foundation on, so I was a little bit worried that this might be too dewy considering all of my skincare care products. But what I found was I put this on over all of that and it starts off really dewy where I think I might end up looking just like a disco ball, but it dries down to a really perfect texture and look on my skin. It's a medium coverage foundation. And so it's like that really nice in between of, you know, you look like you've got this just natural look, but you are pretty covered. It covers up my melasma and it covers up a lot of my imperfections, but it still looks like skin. And that's what I, that, that's what I really like about it. Next up, you guys are always asking about lipsticks, so I feel like I need to share all the lipsticks I've been wearing lately. These are the Slim Glow Matte Lipsticks by YSL, and the reason why I even wanted to give them a try is because I'm a big fan of the original YSL lipsticks. They feel more like lip balms. I'm not a big fan of matte lipstick. I don't want my lips to look too like dry and crusty, and I don't know, I'm just not a fan of it. I know a lot of people love like liquid lipstick, for instance, because it just stays the whole day, and that's the benefit with matte lipstick is that it will stay longer, but I just hate that look of the dry lips. I like something to look more balmy and more glossy, I guess. But these are really good in between. They have a lot of pigment to them, so they're beautiful colors, but they also feel nice and creamy. So you actually feel like you're getting a little bit of a lip balm. It's not a glossy, shiny lip balm, but it feels really comfortable on the lips. They also have a really nice scent to them. I know, you don't need to have a scent to your lipstick, but I like the scent of it. So I bought two colors. One is more of a pinky toned color, and then one of them is more of like a, it's like a caramel type of color, and I really like it for fall. It's kind of like pumpkin spice, but not, because I hate pumpkin spice. It's a little bit better than pumpkin spice. All right, next up is the Foreo Bare Microcurrent Device. And I wanted to try this one out because I shot a video on my channel Mixed Makeup reviewing the mini, the Bare Mini, and I had a huge response from that. People were really curious about whether they should purchase the mini one or if they should purchase the full-size one, the Bare. And so I decided I needed to give it a try to be able to tell people if they should buy it or not and what I think of it. Uh, so far, I have really been liking this. You guys know I'm a big fan of microcurrent. I have been using a device for a very long time. I've switched around to different devices and I tend to have my favorites, but I wanted to give this one a go because I have seen so much talk about it and because so many people have been asking about this. If you guys don't know what microcurrent is, it works your muscles in your face so that you can actually get more of a lifted feel to your face. I think of it kind of like working out. The more you do it, the more toned your face looks, but once you stop, it all starts to kind of go away. So you have to really keep it going. It does not hurt, it's really easy to use. You only have to use it for a few minutes in your routine. I think it's important when you start, especially using microcurrent, to use it at least three to four times a week until you really feel like you see a change. And then after that, it's more like once a week, maybe twice a week so that you can really maintain the effects that you're getting from your microcurrent. I personally like to use a microcurrent device in my morning routine before I'm gonna get ready. That way I get the immediate effects 
aspects of the lifted look. And in that video, you can actually really see the big difference between, you know, the side that I actually tried it on and the side that I didn't. There are these effects that you get, this lifted look that you get that only lasts kind of for the day. And then there are the long-term effects that you get that are a little bit more subtle. So for me, sometimes it's nice to just prep my face for say like a video shoot like today to just get that lifted look. And then there's the maintenance that you get from it. Like I said, it's almost like working out. If you haven't used a microcurrent device before, the Foreo specifically has an app that you can download and then it'll take you through a little routine that makes it very straightforward. You're essentially just following a model who is showing you how to use it. You apply a serum that they have that preps your skin and gives you that slip that you need. And I always talk about how you need to have enough slips so that you don't tug on your skin. The thing to remember with a microcurrent device is that you're going in like upward and outward motions. So you just go through that. And then there are times where I will hold the device. I really love the Foreo Bear Mini just because you can get into, you know, like the areas around your eye and around your mouth. And it's just a little bit more targeted. But this one is really nice if you're comparing it to other devices on the market because of a few things. One, I really like the size of this. It's very small. It's easy to keep on your counter. It's easy to just start to use it. I don't know, it's got like this really nice small handle and it's really soft. I also love that the charge Charger is really just streamlined. Everything's really small on it. So it doesn't take up this huge area on your, you know, like on your countertop or on your dresser or wherever it is that you keep your microcurrent device. And also on top of the charger, you don't actually have to keep it on a charger. You only have to charge it once and it lasts up to 90 uses, which I haven't even got to yet. I only just started using this a few weeks ago. So I haven't even hit 90 uses yet. So I've only charged this once and it's still lasted. Another thing that I really like about this is that it's anti-shock. So so sometimes you'll find when you're using a microcurrent device that it'll give you a little like zinger. It doesn't hurt, trust me. It's more of like it surprises you, but this does not do that. And then the other thing that makes this really different from other devices on the market is that it has this pulsation to it, which just feels nice. It just adds to kind of like the massage effect of it. It also helps your, your products penetrate your skin a little bit deeper and it just, I don't know, it feels nice. You can turn it off if you don't like the pulsation, but you can turn it on if you do want the pulsation. So those are some of the main differences that you're getting with this device versus some of the other devices on the market. I'll leave a link below in the description box so you guys can check this out and learn a little bit more about it. I also, like I said, have the video where I reviewed the Mini, the Bear Mini, which I really like. The Bear Mini, I'd say, are of these two my favorite. I know some people really want the large one and it does have a lot more power to it, but I really like the Mini. It's a really fun device. It is really mini. I compared the two and it's so much smaller. It's easy to use. It gets into those smaller spaces and I feel like it's easy to travel with too. So if you're trying to decide between the two, that would be the reason to get the mini. But if you want a full size device and you're getting serious about this, you can definitely check this one out too. Next up is Bread Beauty Supply. This is a brand that I actually discovered because my business partner started working with them a little bit. You guys probably noticed I started wearing my hair wavy, the nat my, my natural texture, sometime at the beginning of self-quarantine. So I started wearing my hair a little bit more natural and a lot more regularly. But I really started to kind of embrace my natural waves again and start to wear it like that. And I started getting a lot of questions about how I style my hair. And the truth is, is I didn't really know how to style my hair because I used to not do it. I used to just kind of wing it and let it air dry and then basically feel like a sloppy mess the whole day. And so I decided I really wanted to learn how to style my wavy hair. I got so much advice from my followers because I was asking about my niece Alyssa who's mixed and she wanted to start wearing her hair curly as well. And so I started to ask her advice, like how should she be caring for her hair? And the advice that I got from my black followers was the best advice. And I even took some of it for me. I gave most of it to Alyssa. Some of it applies to me. I do not have the same hair texture, but some of that hair care advice I was like, like, of course, why didn't I think of something like this? This is what I need to be doing. And one of that is using products like this by Bread. So one of the things that I really love about this brand is that first off, it is a black owned brand. I think it's a one woman show. So I applaud anybody who is doing this on their own because it's not easy to run a beauty brand or any kind of brand actually. What I really love about the brand is that the products are amazing. They're super moisturizing. They're very hydrating and they feel nice and luxurious and they smell delicious. I like my hair to smell nice. I know fragrance lately seems to be like a big topic. 
I still love my hair products to smell really, really pretty, and these do. You know, first off, these are made for curl types 3A to 4C, but I'm telling you, it's great for anybody who has just thick, coarse, wavy hair, which is what I have. If you get dry hair, if you feel like you don't want frizz, this is why you want to look into these products. If you are a person that has really thick hair, you'll know the struggle of having the shampoo bottle that lasts, like half of it is left in the shower, but then your conditioner is all completely gone. So this is solved because the creamy deep conditioner is actually larger than the shampoo. So the thing that like gets sold to a lot of people that have curly or wavy hair is that we're not supposed to be using surfactants or, you know, like harsh cleansers on our hair because it dries it out. But then we end up getting, you know, these shampoos that don't really feel like they clean our hair. This does. So it feels like it, you're putting on almost like a lotion on your hair and I target it more to my scalp, but this ends up actually cleansing your hair too. So, so it does have actual cleansing agents in it. It just feels really gentle and it really does make your scalp feel like it's nice and cleansed and clean, but not stripped. It feels kind of like a marshmallow creamy texture. It's honestly like a really nice rich cream is what it feels like to me. I put it into my scalp area. That's where I would use regular shampoo. And then I just rinse it out and my, my hair and my scalp just feel really nice and conditioned. And I've noticed that some of the dryness of my scalp has gotten a lot better. And then after that, I go in with the deep conditioner and this is so nice. And one of the tips that I've learned from my black followers is that I was being a little bit too precious with the amount of conditioner I was using uh, and also like the curl cream and stuff that I was using as well. I use a ton of this. I was kind of like doing your typical thing that I heard from hairstylists and that was, I was only putting hair conditioner from here, like mid length, all the way down. And I realized that that's what you need to do when you have finer hair or straight hair. You don't want your hair to look weighed down. I'm realizing that I do need to have more conditioning throughout my hair so I don't get frizziness. So I put this all over. I don't put it right onto my scalp, but I put it from about here down and I let it sit for about five to 10 minutes and then I rinse it out. It is a deep conditioner and I use this every single time I wash my hair, which is like truly like every three to four days or so. And I have just seen so such a huge difference in how my waves look. I have a whole styling process as well and products that I use outside of the shower, but I really do feel like these are just beautiful shampoo and conditioner for anybody with wavy hair or curly hair. All right, so over the last few months since we started to be like in self-quarantine, and when I say self-quarantine, it's been a little bit looser, obviously, for the last couple of months here in Los Angeles. We're not just completely stuck in our house, but something that became a trend for me, and I'm sure for a lot of people, is that I started purchasing matching sets. And when I say matching sets, I'm not saying like really high fashion matching sets where I feel like this is something I could go to the office in. I mean like super comfy, could almost be pajamas, just wear it around the house. I just want to be comfy, but feel like I've got a little bit of like a fashion sense to it, but not really. So I've been shopping around at a lot of different retailers, Revolve, Amazon, on Zara, on Shopbop. It doesn't matter. It's like, I haven't really been picky about where I'm getting my matching sets. I've just been buying matching sets. So I wanted to share a few of my favorite ones. For example, this is from Revolve. This is the sweater. These are the matching shorts. There's a little theme going on with all of my sets. They have like drawstrings on them. They're all very like cotton and very light. As we transitioned into the fall, I started buying the long sleeve ones like this one. It's not really warm. I live in Los Angeles. It's actually been really hot in LA, but you don't have to buy a set like this one from Lovers and Friends. But like this set, for instance, is from Amazon. I actually bought two colors of it because I liked it so much. It's the same concept though, really, really, really comfy, a drawstring. And really the theme is everything just matches. If you've been watching some of my videos lately, you might've seen like I've purchased like a couple of tie dye matching outfits. I have purchased full on sweatsuit matching outfits. All of them have truly the same theme going on. I want them to be comfy. I want a drawstring. I want to be able to fall asleep in them if I have to. <laughs> and I also uh, want them to feel very lightweight. So I'm not really looking for sweatsuits or anything that feel very bulky. I'm looking for stuff that just feels very 
very lightweight. I can layer it. I can put on my slippers or I can put on my sneakers and I'm still gonna feel like I'm okay. But I think the reason why I've been liking the matching sets so much is I'm pretty sure like the matching sets for me make me feel like I'm at least getting ready or trying a little bit because what I found myself doing at the beginning of the year, I guess like in March, April, was that I truly wasn't trying whatsoever. I was like getting up and unless I had a Zoom call or something, I was not putting on anything. And even for my Zoom calls, I was just keeping like my pajama bottoms on and putting on a shirt. Like that was it. That was the extent of me trying. At least as I've transitioned into these matching sets, I feel like I've got something going on, like it's a uniform or something. Along the same lines, I'm still trying to be comfy and I actually spent the last few months trying to find the perfect house slippers. I know that should be easy, but it's not. I purchased a lot of different house slippers on Amazon and they weren't really the, the slippers that I wanted and I finally decided I needed to spend a little bit more money, go a little bit more high quality and I decided to go for these. They are the Emo Australia fur slippers. They're really comfy. They might not seem like they can keep you warm because they are open toe, but because they're so fuzzy, they're really comfy and they are really warm actually. So I wear these all over the house. I'm Asian, my husband is also Asian, he's Indian. So we're a no, no shoes in the house family. Slippers, this is the equivalent of basically the shoes I wear every single day. It's been really hard for me because I love shoes. Like if there's one thing about fashion, I love shoes. And I haven't really been going anywhere to actually justify buying a nice pair of shoes and then what, they just sit there. So I feel like buying some nice slippers that really make me happy have really like changed the game for me. I've got my house slippers. All right, next up, I went and I purchased a nice hat. I know that might sound funny, but I have never really purchased myself a nice hat. I've never spent any real money on a hat. I've always just purchased really cheap hats. I've treated them poorly. I've never had like a hat box or anything like that. And you know, I've been wearing hats a lot. So I bought myself this hat. The brand is Janessa Leone. And it's one of those brands that you see all the like fashion influencers wearing. And you you think to yourself like, mm, do I want to splurge on a hat? I can't pull that off, only a fashion girl can. But you know what, I love the hat. The hats are a little bit pricey. I think that's what was always stopping me from buying them because I'm all about buying a hat. I go for walks all the time with Nikosh and I wear a hat, but I'm always wearing cheap hats. I buy, even when we go on beach vacations, I buy really cheap hats. I don't know why I do that, but I do. And I started realizing, you know what? I wear a hat so much because we go for so many walks now that I am always putting on a hat or some kind of a visor to protect my face from the sun. So I might as well splurge on a hat that I really, really like. So they were having a sale and I went ahead and purchased this. I don't know the name of the hat. It was between this one and another hat called their Simone hat. I'll leave a link though in the description box. I'll leave a link so you guys can see this hat. Like I said, it's a little bit pricey, but I feel like it's worth it. It's a really nice light hat. It feels like it's really high quality. It has a leather strap around it and it fits nicely. I'm a size medium, so I have a medium sized head, but they do have different sizes. I had to end up going into the store to purchase this one to figure out what size really fit me, but you can shop them online as well. I love this hat. I've been wearing it a lot and I've been wearing it so much more than I expected that I might treat myself to a felt hat at some point. All right, so next up, if you guys actually saw, I did like a pantry organization slash like kitchen organization video on the channel. So I've been really trying to get my house a little bit more organized and pay more attention to the things that I'm using in my kitchen. So I went out and I purchased these. They are stasher bags. I had known about them for a while and I've been really excited about them. And I had like one or two stasher bags that I got in gift bags actually, but I hadn't actually committed to purchasing a whole set of them, but I was realizing we were using so many Ziploc bags. Ziploc bags get like one or two uses maybe, and then you toss them. You know, I think about it, it makes me a little bit sick thinking about how many Ziploc bags I've put out there to just like, you know, go into a landfill or something. So I decided to pony up and I purchased a whole set of stasher bags. They are these silicone reusable baggies. So they're taking the place of our Tupperware, which PS, we don't actually have Tupperware. It's just we, a lot of our containers are reusable containers because there are so many different sizes and stuff. So I went ahead and just bought a set that way I could just have the different sizes, but I'm finding that we're using probably more like the typical Ziploc baggy size the most. And then also this larger size, is this a gallon? I don't even know what size this is, but it's a little bit larger and you can see on the bottom, it has a little bit more 
of like a space so that it can sit upright. You can put these in the microwave, you can rewash them, you can put them in the dishwasher. They're really cute. They feel really fun and soft because of the silicone material and they seal really nicely. They're even like actually a little bit hard to open. You have to use two hands to do it. But it comes in these really cute colors. I don't know, something about stasher bags make me really excited. I really recommend these, they're fun. You end up not needing to use so many Ziploc bags because you grab these and they take the place of your Ziploc bags. It takes a little getting used to because I think it's almost like a habit to reach for Ziploc bags. But now that we've really gotten into a groove and even my husband, at first he saw them and he was annoyed that I bought something extra for our kitchen. And then now, guess who's using our stasher bags? It's my husband, Arun. Next up is something that I start seeing on Instagram and that is peak teas. I think that's how you say it. It's peak, P-I-Q-U-E. Teas and what sold me was the matcha sticks. I love to drink a matcha latte and in normal times I'd always be at a cafe like during the day getting a matcha latte and just, I don't know, like for me like that's my midday treat. But what I was finding was, you know, I was buying like matcha powders and stuff from Amazon. They were highly rated ones and stuff. And they would still be really kind of gross. Like you'd get powder chunks in your matcha latte and then you have to do it right. You have to make sure that you're taking the powder. You're definitely using the right temperature water and just the right amount so it's not too watery and you're making like the paste. And then you have to put your almond milk or whatever milk that you're gonna use and it just would turn into this huge process. So I started seeing the peak matcha tea. I saw people like influencers and stuff using it and I decided to go ahead and purchase it. I mean, they talk about things like it's free from pesticides and heavy metals and toxic mold and everything. And I was kind of like, I don't really care about that. What I want is something easy. And what I like is that it's these little packets. If you open it up, you'll see I'm like halfway through this box already, but it comes in these little packets. And I know that that's not very sustainable. So the next purchase I'm gonna make is gonna be their bag of matcha, or I think they have like a box of matcha, but I bought this first. So I realize, I already acknowledge, okay. But you have these little packets and you put it into either a cold liquid or hot liquid, it doesn't matter. And that's what sold me on it because it's just so easy. You don't even actually need to get like the frother out or make a big deal of it. You can literally put it in your glass of cold water and then stir it together and you've got a matcha tea. And that to me makes everything so much easier and it tastes really, really good. So you aren't getting like that powdery feeling in your mouth or like, you know, like a little powder chunk that gets into your mouth that tastes disgusting. You're instead getting a really smooth tea and it makes it just so much easier to have a matcha tea. And then the last product is a product I've actually talked about on my channel before, back when Nikosh was like maybe around one. It is a brand called MiWi. I love these little peanut butter packets that come from MiWi. And the original flavor that I had tried with Nikosh was this one, it's their banana peanut butter. So essentially it's peanut butter, coconut oil, and then whatever flavoring. So in this case, banana. If you don't know what these are, they're little peanut butter packs and they're made for your baby. They have them for toddlers, they have them for adults. They're all kind of different, but these ones specifically are for your baby. And what I like about these and the reason why I purchased them was because I kept hearing from like our pediatrician and from like blogs and influencers and stuff that you should introduce the allergen foods to your baby earlier rather than later because what they're starting to find is that when you introduce these allergens earlier, your child has less of a chance of having an, an extreme allergy at least to one of these. And that's, for instance, peanut butter. So with these little packs, they're actually really tasty and they make for a wonderful snack for your child as well. They're very straightforward. So they're just peanut butter, coconut oil flavoring. So the flavoring in this one is banana and it's real banana. And then I think they put like a little bit of palm oil in this and it's super easy. You can throw one into your bag, which I always have them in our diaper bags and you just peel that off and then you squeeze it up to the top and then your baby eats it. It starts off messy the first few times you ever introduce it to your baby. Isla was like, covered in peanut butter and Arun was upset about this. We didn't experience that with Nikosh because when I discovered these, he was already pretty self-sufficient in eating. Like he was a little older than one when I introduced him to these. But Isla, I introduced it to her as an infant and now she's eating them also. She loves these. These make for a really nutritious snack. They give her a lot of energy. She hates milk. So it's been one of those things where I've had to find other ways to give her those healthy fats and stuff. So this has been just a really great snack to have for her because she loves it. She eats at least one of them a day. You know, this is a variety pack and they have an apple cinnamon peanut butter, a banana peanut butter, and a strawberry peanut butter. And they also have other flavors for big kids and for adults too. 
So those are my October favorites. I'll leave links below in the description box so that you can check all of this stuff out. You can shop it if you want. You can ask me any questions about these products in the comments below. And you can also find me on Instagram. I'm at Susan Yara and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.